in my car. Bum, 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 bum. Right, what should I listen to? Hmm, no. 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 Oh, let's listen to some pink. In our family portrait, we look pretty happy. Uh oh. Oh, crap, what was that? Please don't be Rocky. Please don't be Rocky. Oh, good, it's not Rocky. What's going on guys and welcome back to the channel and today we are going to be looking at episode 5 from season 1 of the Rumi's animated series and this episode is called The Accident and there's a few things in here that uh, I, I want to point out as to why it went in the show now. The the first part here is the Pink Song family portrait, it's something that it reminds me of a couple of my nieces that from way back when it was first released. Um, also as, as you've watched the video, the reason why I've done this episode is it has something to do with the relationship between me and my dad and from when I was 16 years old and I had an operation. No, I might have been, I think I was younger, I think I was about 13, 14 and I had an earlier operation and basically what happened is um, my dad was working at the time and after the operation I was waiting outside the hospital with him, uh, for him with my mum. And the idea was that he'd come to us and we'd take a taxi home. And my dad is a TV addict that he's got his programs that he watches and he never wants to miss them. So basically what happened is he met us, he met us at the hospital and because he saw the traffic on the A12, he decided that it would be a better idea, like a couple of hours after me having a hernia operation, to rather than get a taxi home, to jump on a train during rush hour packed solid London underground train and yeah that, <laughs> that that whole day was just a mess but in a funny way and I'll talk about it more as the video goes on but it, it kind of relates to the way Mr Daz is now towards Nick even though it's not father son but the way Mr Daz now is towards Nick after he does what he does in this episode but anyway let's get cracking on thank you all for tuning in don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button and my voice is very croaky today England were playing Italy last night in the Euro final and my voice is, is gone, so bear with me. You just hit me with your car. Did you not see the reverse lights on? When they come in, I would recommend not standing behind a car. I was knocking on the window to get your attention, but you were singing a pink song. No, I wasn't. It was a remix with another more popular song. I couldn't care less. Can you just call an ambulance, please? Why? I only tapped you. Man up and walk it off. Have you seen my leg? No, let me. Oh my god, that looks disgusting. I'll cover it up, please. Call me a bloody ambulance. <laughs> okay, calm down, will ya? Okay, I've just spoken to the doctor and he said that your leg is definitely broken. You're going to need to rest up for about six weeks and then start physiotherapy. Oh, well, that's just bloody great, isn't it? Am I supposed to go to work and pay my bills? Don't worry, I will speak to Susan and see if you can work from home. I'm sure she won't mind. Oh yeah, because that's what I need. Work from home with a broken leg and unable to do anything for myself. This is so much of an inconvenience. You should have been watching where you was going. What if I was a child? Yeah, I know. <laughs> okay, what if I was Rocky? <gasps> <clears throat> don't you say that. I don't know what I would do if something happened to Rocky. So you break my leg and I get nothing, but if you have to fault with it being Rocky, you have a mini meltdown. You're messed up in the head, you know that? Alright, let's just hit this morphine button for you. I don't want morphine, I want... Ah, oh, that's nice. I love you, Mr. Daz. Yeah, whatever. Shut up and get some rest. <laughs> okay. So, I've had two earlier operations in the past. The first one, I was a teenager, so 13, 14 years old, and that's what happened. After the operation, my dad made me get the train home and a bus it was it was a train and a bus both packed solid both during rush hour so he could get home and watch diagnosis murder and <laughs> i'll remember it like yesterday but i also had another hernia and i had the operation on it i think i was about 19 20 i was working in a pub at the time and because i was drinking i used to do stupid things so i used to lift the beer barrels when i'd been drinking thinking oh superman and i ended up with another hernia and he actually came with me to the hospital for the second operation and what happened is i wanted to get a scene in in the hospital room but not for the way that because obviously nick wasn't having an operation but for me as you know before an operation you can't eat nothing you can't drink nothing and 
before I went to theatre, they come in just to check my vitals and everything. And I was starving. I wanted something to drink and I was starving. I wanted to smoke, but I couldn't do nothing. And there was, <laughs> they was checking my blood pressure and my heart rate. And they offered my dad some tea and biscuits. Now, at the time, I was hooked on bourbon biscuits. I don't know why I just liked them so much. They brought him in a cup of tea and on a plate they had like two or three bourbon biscuits and my heart rate just, <laughs> it just started to go up and down, up and down. I was probably just looking at his biscuits thinking, oh, I want some. But yeah, and he sat there and he drank it in front of me and he ate them biscuits and he had the cheek to turn around and say they was absolutely lovely. So yeah, that, that was another experience with him. Really? You couldn't help us up the stairs? You just had to rush up so you can put the telly on? No, I didn't want to put the telly on. I rushed up so I could open the doors for you. But you're sitting down and none of the doors are open. Oh yeah, sorry, I forgot to leave them open. <laughs> Pulse and rabbit. What's for dinner? You expect me to cook? You broke my leg by hitting me with your car and the minute I get out of hospital you expect me to cook for you? No, of course not. David, run out and get me a pizza. You're amazing, you are. Ah, oh, thank you. You're not too bad yourself. <laughs> <coughs> So, I've spoke about the things that, like, my dad's done, like, before an operation and after an operation, but my mum's not so innocent in it all either, and so after my second operation, I was working at the time, so I had money, so after the operation, I decided to pay for a taxi home myself, and when I got home, I was at home for about 15, 20 minutes, and we'd run out of sugar, and... An argument, not a massive argument, but just bickering between me mum and dad in shoe that who's going to go down the shop and get the sugar. My dad's argument was that he'd been at the hospital with me all day and he was knackered because t hospitals make you tired. My mum's argument is that she was out doing whatever she was doing that day and they just sat there bickering and bickering and in the end I was like, do you know what, give me the money and I'll go down the shop. That, so yeah, so not only did, like for the first operation, he made me get the train home and a bus, but a couple of hours after the second hernia operation, I decided to go down the shop and get some sugar because they couldn't stop bickering over it. I've got a good family. Be a long six weeks. The doctor <clears> said that <throat> Nick can't be left alone in the apartment for the first few weeks, so someone has to stay with him. What am I supposed to do for him that I can't do from work? This is just a nightmare. <laughs> Hi Nick, how are you feeling? How do you think I'm feeling? Okay, no need to be rude. I actually came in with a little surprise for you. Really? Yeah, remember in the hospital there was that nurse that done everything for you and you couldn't take your eyes off of her? Yeah. Well, I can't stay at home for six weeks, so I've decided to pay out so you can have the same hospital treatment here in the apartment. Oh, Mr. Daz, thank you so much. To be honest, you've really been starting to get on my nerves since the accident, but this changes everything and I really do appreciate everything that you do. Yeah, you're welcome. You can come in there. Nick, I would like you to meet your new nurse for the next six weeks. <laughs> Hi Nick, would you like a bed bath? Mr. Daz! <laughs> that solved the problem. Stay at home for six weeks taking care of a whingy crybaby. No thank you. David can take care of him at no extra cost because once Nick's recovered I'll bill him. Do I feel bad about the situation? No. D <clears throat> this is where it is the case that Mr. Daz reminds me a lot of my own dad because in the situation, like when it comes to money, with my dad that He'd like to think that he's a very generous person and things like that. But if you borrow money off of him, he will be on your back. If if I lend him money, if if he come to me and said, oh, have you got 20 quid to lend me? I'll be like, yeah, fine, go on. It, I'll pay you back in a week. In my mind, I'm like, all right, then. You said you're going to pay me back in a week. You'll pay me back in a week. If I was to go to my dad and say, have you got 20 quid to lend me? And I'll pay you back in a week. You can guarantee you will get five phone calls a day just to remind you that you have to pay him back in a week. <laughs> I <clears throat> still believe it was Nick's fault for standing behind the car, so I don't feel one ounce of guilt. I don't feel a bit angry, though. David, come and cook me some food. Okay. Yes, Mum, I'm fine. Yes, I broke my leg, but it will heal in time. No, I don't need you to come and take care of me. I'm not a kid anymore. Yeah, Mr. Daz has been helping out. David, too. These are little things in terms of the animation. If you watch Nick's finger now as he's talking. So, at the beginning of this scene, with the phone in his hand... 
he he was moving on the bed a lot more and then all of a sudden it just stopped and he went still but his hand's still moving and specifically you can see his little finger that just keeps going in and out of the phone these are things now that i will make sure doesn't happen because i will watch it back frame by frame and if i see anything like that i hate things like that now i might miss the odd bit here and there but in general that is what i will look out for now I mean, the living person... Oh, I don't know. Yes, okay, Mum, I'll speak to you soon. Bye, I love you. Uh, can I get you anything, Nick? Maybe just a cup of tea and some biscuits? No problem. We'll need to give you a wash soon as well. Don't want you to start stinking. Thank you. How did you get so good at taking care of people? Uh, I had to take care of my brothers and sisters while my mum went out and worked two jobs. What about your father? Well, he went out to buy bread a few years ago and still hasn't come back. I think he got lost. Yeah, maybe. So you take care of your brothers and sisters. How many do you have? Well, I have two brothers and four sisters. Wow, that's a big family. I'm an only child, so I wouldn't know what that feels like. It's okay. They can be a bit annoying sometimes, but they're good kids. That's nice to know. It just sometimes gets a bit much at home. There are eight of us living in a two-bedroom apartment, so it can be hectic. That's why I like spending time here. It's so quiet here. Except for when Mr Daz is about. He's so selfish and ignorant. Well, maybe, but he treats me well when he pays me for doing this job. He pays you peanuts. For the amount of stuff that you do for him, he should be paying you a lot more. No, I don't need any more of Mr Daz's money. But wouldn't it help? It would, but Mr Daz already pays the rent so my family have a roof over their heads. So, <clears throat> before this episode, I was getting asked by people on on YouTube and places like Reddit that the backstory of David because like why would he work for Mr Daz for peanuts and things like that and then when I made this episode and people found out that like Mr Daz also pays David's rent uh, there's a twist towards that at the end which is which is a, a nice little twist to go in there but for each episode I wanted to do it that I, I added little bits and pieces from people's part like the characters past just to get an idea of the character and where they're from and how they ended up where they are now so this was david's part he's got a big family his his mum's a single mum she's on benefits so if david was to go out and work she'd be penalized for that even though she's got other kids as well so that that was part and parcel of trying to get it in and why david is working for mr daz for peanuts but because it is cash in hand it's under the table there's no tax involved and so that was the idea behind this part so Mr. Daz pays David's rent, the rent for the entire apartment that his mum, brothers and sisters live in. Maybe I got him all wrong. His heart seems to be in the right place. He just doesn't know how to use it at times. It's amazing the things you find out about people. Things that you'd never believe a person would do until you hear they're actually doing it. Paints them in a whole new light. For now. Hi Mr Daz, how was work today? Same as usual, rude people on the phone, rude colleagues in your office, so just your normal day. Yeah, colleagues are not friends are they? They are definitely not. Except me of course. <coughs> okay, so when he said that, colleagues are not friends, the idea behind that was to actual, actually get the name of the show in the show until I changed it to Roomies. <laughs> me and you were colleagues and then became friends. Oh yeah, of course. So I was speaking to David earlier and he told me what you do for him. Oh, him and his big mouth. I'd done it once and it was because he couldn't see it back there. What? What? I meant paying the rent on his mum's place. What were you talking about? Oh, nothing. One thing I don't like about Arclone and the, the animating behind it, if you look at Nick now and look at his shorts, you can see that his shorts are going through the chair and like to not do it you need to be able to to wrap the shorts tightly around and i'm sure there are ways of doing it i just haven't figured it out yet but it happens quite a lot and even like the episodes that i do now the the checkered shirt that nick wears with some of his arm movements the shirt the, the, the elbow part of the shirt goes through the top part of the shirt and i can't stand it but unless they're wearing vests and like wife fronts I'm still trying to figure that part out. So if you're watching and you know how to sort that out, then comments down below, please. It would help. Yeah, I didn't think that's something you'd ever do. 
Not normally, but David is a special case. Why is that? Well, when I met David, he had nothing. His dad was a bum and didn't want to work, and his mum worked herself into the ground just to make ends meet. When his dad left, they struggled a lot. I'd just come into some money, so I decided to help him out. Oh, that's very sweet of you. How did you and David meet? David sold me Rocky when he was a pup. He only wanted £100 for him, but when I saw how he was living, I ended up paying him a lot more for him. That's really surprised me. You don't seem like the type. The type of what? The type of person to help a family out when they're at their lowest. The type of person who continues to support them to this day without asking anything in return. If you think that low of me, then maybe you need to spend more time getting to know the people in your life. I think I hit a nerve with Mr. Daz. It's actually quite nice to see him be that vulnerable. He comes across as a tough nut most of the time, so when he gets defensive, it's a nice change of pace. I'm starting to wonder if he'll pay my rent while I'm laid up. It would take a lot of the stress off. How are you feeling, Nick? Good as new. Just looking forward to getting out of this apartment and back to work. Well, today is the day. Just remember, look both ways and don't walk behind cars. Yeah, ha ha, very funny. I'm not working today, but I can give you a lift in if you want. I'm going that way. Oh, that would be great, thank you. What are you doing on your day off? Oh, I just need to go over to David's place and give him this month's rent money. Don't want him to end up on the streets now, do we? No, we don't. I still can't believe you pay their rent. Yeah, well, we can't take it with us when we're gone. Yet you still couldn't help me out while I was laid up resting. Yeah, well, I'm not a charity. <laughs> <clears throat> the thing is, is that with, with Mr. Daz, that the, the way that his character is, is like, I, I say a lot that he reminds me of my dad for certain things that he does, but in that way, he's, he's not like my dad. The sarcastic, the sarcastic side there that, like, well, I'm not a charity, that, that's that's more my sort of personality that that is the sort of thing that like I, I can be quite quick witted when talking to people and like as my wife says I've got an answer for everything so the personality between with Mr. Daz between me and my own dad yeah it, it's quite strange to watch sometimes thank you for the rent this morning you're welcome David how's the family we're okay, thank you. My mum just got a different job, so we should be getting more money for less hours. Oh, that's good. What will she be doing? She's going to be a stripper. <laughs> really? Blah. So, <clears throat> the idea, and it's quite strange because Mr. Daz pays the rent for David and his mum and the kids in that, that flat. So, it's quite strange that Mr. Daz has never met David's mum when you would have thought that he would have. Like, if you've got someone that's been paying your rent every month for God knows how long, you'd have expected to meet the person paying the rent, but it's just never happened. So that does happen in a few... In I don't know if it's the next episode after this one, but it happens soon. So, yeah, we'll, we'll get to that part soon. Oh, nothing. I hope she gets it. Yeah, me too. If she gets the job, then I can go there and eat from the buffet for free. <laughs> yeah, cool. Where's Nick? He went back to work today. Oh, is it nice to have him out of the apartment again? Between me and you, David, it's always nice to have him out of the apartment. I like Nick. He is funny. Really? The man has never made me laugh once. <laughs> he makes me laugh. He has got me thinking over the past few weeks, though. Maybe I should do more to help others. I have enough money to help people, and deep down I probably do want to be more giving. What do you think? I like helping people. Yeah, well not everything's about you, David. <laughs> okay. <laughs> That's decided then. From there on, I'm going to do a lot more... Uh, <laughs> <coughs> the thing is, is that... Like, even though I write this, I record it, I create it, but... The thing is, is that even just to sit and watch it back... Now, like I said, I've got a stepson who loves watching these, so... A majority of these episodes, I've seen time and time and time again because he can sit and watch them all day long. But I still laugh at the sarcastic side because it's the sort of thing that I'd want to see. If I was watching a show that I didn't create, it's the sort of sarcasm that makes me laugh that I'd like to see. And yeah, that just just for the way Mr. Daz is and for the way he responds. And a lot of this, believe it or not, is not actually written originally. These are things that are put in either... Once I've written it and then I start recording it, I'll add bits in or it will come after as I'm creating the scene. I'll just sit there and think to myself, no, something else needs to go there or like straight away it will be that like this will come in. And even this this whole scene here, 
the the phone call that you're about to see with Nick after Mr. Dad saying that he wants to be more charitable and help people more. This wasn't originally in it. This is something that I, I wrote the script. I went up and started to record it. And then I thought to myself, no, nah, it needs to be at a point where there's a phone call and someone's in need of help. And the only person it can be is Nick. And he just turns on him. So it, it's almost like Mr. Daz has this split personality of like, he wants to do good and then he's not going to do good. And yeah, it's just something that I, I find it quite amusing. I'm not sure about you guys, but it amuses me. Hi, Nick. Oh, no. Nick left his wallet in his room. Yeah? No, I gave you a lift to work this morning. I'm not coming to pick you up as well. I don't care. Get a cab. Run upstairs. Get your wallet and then run back down to pay the cabbie. Yeah, I know you broke your leg. It was me that run you over. And if you start taking advantage of my good nature, I will do it again. <laughs> Goodbye. <laughs> Okay, from tomorrow I'll start doing more to help out. Did your sister give you the £16 for the rent? Yes, thank you. Okay, so it is true. I do pay David's rent each and every month without fail. What most people fail to realise is that he lives in a council property and his family claim benefits. David's rent is £4 per week or £16 per month. I've got no problem paying that to ensure that they keep the roof over their heads. I just take it out of his wages at the end of the month. <laughs> So with that, when this episode first got released, there there was a couple of people that were surprised by the actual rent amount of £4 a week or £16 a month. And I'm not sure about in other countries, but in the UK, it is definitely a possibility. I mean, I've got family that have got, they're, they're single parents with kids and it can be that their rent has been like £3 a month, uh, £3 a week or £2.50 a week and things like that. So... It's just basically the way the benefit system works. So if you're claiming a benefit and there's a housing benefit involved, the housing benefit will cover the majority of your rent. But if the rent is over the threshold of what they can cover, then you have to find the rest. And it can be that it, it can be one pound a week. It can be 10 pound a week, but there is a cut off to it. And then the threshold that you then have to make up the amount but anyway this was the episode and like i said i enjoyed making this episode because i got the idea based on my own experiences with my dad when i had my own operations and things like that and how we dealt with it at the time so i just went along the lines with that to create an episode around that where it i, I also got to like include a bit more of david's backstory because david had to take care of nick there's more conversation there between them so you've got a little bit more of an idea with david's backstory and again just with mr daz that that there's not a lot of things that david and nick do in here that would make you laugh the one that would make you laugh the most is for the way mr daz is and the way mr daz acts that nick is not really the one with the biggest sense of humor david is the one that, that there's little one lines here and there that it will make you laugh but yeah it's, it's mr daz and for the way mr daz goes and yeah it's just going to keep coming i've got so many ideas for future episodes and i think we're up to i think the next the latest one that just got released was episode 26 overall from the roomy season uh, the roomy series one and two and i think I, i've wrote some more down i think i've got about 120 episode ideas coming up and a lot of them are following that there's going to be episodes that the latest one that i've just done is mr daz getting high and then if you've watched the recent episode with rocky you'll know why and then i've got episodes where mr daz goes back to his old apartment so the videos that i started to do before i created the roomy series was in a different apartment so i'm going to try and include them as well so he goes back to that old apartment where it's old neighbours and things like that. So there's there's so many ideas that are going to come. But like until then, this was episode five from season one. Um, come back tomorrow and we'll be doing episode six, which I believe is David's mum. If I remember rightly, it's where we introduced David's mum. And I just want to thank you all for tuning in. Sorry again about the voice that I'm going to be recording more videos now. So tomorrow's one, you're going to hear a croaky voice. But... Anyway, it's appreciated that you tune in. Don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button and let me know what you thought down below and I will see you next time.